So continuing to, to do this, and again, once again, I'm using my half inch flat brush. And the reason I like those so much is you can just by angling the brush, you can instantly convert it from a, a broad stroke uh, paintbrush, if you like. And just by using the edge or the corner, you can create a little bit of a line or even a dot. What I'm adding now, though, is something of a yellow ochre that I've mixed up. So that's been mixed up with you know, mostly yellow some of the magenta and then a little touch of the blue. You don't want to overdo the blue because then it become too greeny in colour, but um, you do need just a little touch of blue to create yellow ochre. And my hope is, as I paint in these horns, is that uh, some of the shadow work that I did before, once the paint dries, I'm hoping some of that will show through. So there's our cow pretty much done in terms of its uh, first layer of paint. Just going round again now while I've got that yellow ochre on the brush and adding a little bit of the uh, reflected more subdued highlights that are perhaps where the light is perhaps bouncing up off the ground and up onto the animal's belly. So those highlights won't be as bright as the ones up on top. But now having added uh, a little bit of magenta to that mix I'm using so this particular uh, longhorn, uh, longhorn uh, steer was on kind of a sandy very dry area. So I've added a little bit of magenta to the mix I was using before for the horns. And as you can see, I'm kind of scumbling that in to fill in the ground area. So I'll just jump ahead a little bit on the video just to say if you watch me paint in the background. So as you can see, I've also painted a blue in on the, the background uh, above that little horizon line I put in. And that was simply mixed up with uh, titanium white and a little bit of ultramarine blue. So I'm now coming in with much more of the titanium white, still with that blue mix though. So I kept that little bit of blue on the brush, but I've added a lot more titanium white. And I'm using that to pick out some brighter highlights along the lengths of both horns. But once again, as I do that, I am keeping in mind the shape of the surface. So because the horns are cylindrical, I'm putting down curved brush strokes. So a little bit of a focus problem there, sorry about that, but the uh, hopefully you'll be able to see once my hand is out of the way that I'm also adding some highlights to the top of the head of the animal. And again those brush strokes are in keeping with the shape of the animal's head, so they're rather straighter than those on the horns. So um, Continuing with this light colour, adding a little bit more contrast in certain areas. And the great thing with the interactive acrylics is that if you put down a patch of colour and you realise, oh, you know, that didn't quite work or the effect is a bit harsh, then, you know, you can spray the surface of the painting with water and just very gently soften those areas that you've put down. And in some cases, you can even lift them off. Now, because of the way I'm working today, uh, if I, I would have to be rather careful if I try to lift off an area of paint completely, unless I just made you know such a, a dire mistake that I thought, oh, okay, that bit just hasn't worked at all. But you know, then I can spray the paint with water and, and mop it up with a pa with a paper towel to kind of remove that area. But um, because I've got underlying interactive acrylic underneath the top layer, I've got to be a bit more careful if I choose to do that if I try to lift off the top layer of paint. So in some of my uh, earlier videos, so if you go back to some of the really early videos on the channel, before I started posting regularly, I've done some, some paintings where um, I did a painting of a Dartmoor horse. I did a painting of some sheep and a lamb up on Dartmoor and also some cows, th I think three cows uh, in a Devon field with a Devon landscape behind. And those are fairly long paintings. They're sort of split up into 16 or 17, 10 minute videos. Uh, but in those paintings, I put down a layer of conventional acrylic first and then put the interactive on top. So if you're interested in that technique, then perhaps something to, to have a look at. So while I've been chatting away there, I've continued to add highlights. And one of the things I just did was just very gently feather the brush across that area of deep shadow on the on the steer's chest and that's a really nice way to get a textured and layered effect is to have a dark underlayer and then just very lightly drag 
a lighter colour over the top. But I've switched to my round brush now, just feeling the need to add a little line of shadow on the underside of the right hand horn, just to try and bring that horn forward from the body a little bit. And for this particular uh, application, my flat brush wouldn't really have done the job. At least not for the effect I want in this case. I want a rather more refined line that I would be able to obtain quickly for, along the length of that horn. But I'm just further enhancing some of the shadows with a light purple colour, so mixed up with magenta and ultramarine blue and titanium white. So I'm all for using the biggest brush possible for as long as possible because you can get so much done, you can be so expressive and frankly it's just really good fun. But there are times where I say to myself, OK, if I use a big brush here, I'm going to mess up my painting. And in, in those situations, I, um, I, I then switch to the smaller round brush. Now, the underlying shadow on the left horn is rather darker than the one on the right. So although we were using the same colours as, as widely as possible across the entirety of the steer early on, um, later on, I try to become more discerning about the, the, sh the colours in the shadows, how light and dark those shadows are. And not just in terms of observing what's actually happening in my reference or if I'm working from life, what's actually happening in the real world. But just in terms of, you know, what do I think is going to work well for this particular image? So, for example, the shadows on the right hand horn are rather more bluey than the ones on the left. And that blue on the right hand horn is nicely complementary to the oranginess of the brown on the torso of the steer. However, for the left hand horn, because I've got that rather light blue background, my thinking at this point was, well, perhaps I need a, a darker, more reddish shadow on that left hand side. So that's that's why I went in that direction. So adding a few more refining lines now uh, with the round brush and you know, one of the things you can do um, to try and loosen up your painting is not hold the brush too tightly. So if you look at different people, when, if you're ever out and about in a coffee shop or wherever you are, when you see people writing something down, um, just take a moment to see, oh, that's just my cat on the left there coming in <laughs> to the edge of the camera. He likes to inspect the work once in a while. Um, whenever you get the opportunity to just, you know, see how people write, take note of how tightly they hold the, the pen or the or if you're watching art videos on YouTube, you can do it. So, yeah, there are some great artists out there, but if you look at the way some of them hold their brush, they really are holding a huge amount of tension in their hand and their wrist. Um, and so one of the things I like to do once in a while is I will try and do a painting holding the brush handle with just my with just the fingertip of my forefinger and the and the tip of my thumb. And I'll have the other three fingers of my hand dead straight, not in contact with the brush in any way. Now, you know, when I'm doing videos, I generally don't do that too much because I, I don't feel I can operate that well with such a relaxed approach, but it's a really good exercise to do. Uh, perhaps I'll do a video on that at some point. So continuing with the small brush, just putting some of those warmer, light ochre tones along the, the length of the left hand horn there. A little bit on the tip as well. And then a little bit of a time jump there. Now, the reason I did that was you can see I've added some sort of reddish brown textured marks to the head of the cow and also on other areas of the steer. And um, really, that was a bit of a mistake, to be honest, because what happened was on my reference photo. This particular steer has patches of very, uh, you know, areas which are very white. And then in amongst that are some kind of reddish, reddish textures and reddish tufts of hair. And I fell into the trap because I had my small brush of doing detail too early on uh, in the painting. So for that reason, rather than make you sit through my mistake, what I thought I'd, I'd do is just jump ahead a little bit in time and um, then you can see how I correct it, which is hopefully going to be more useful to you um, if you're watching this in terms of, you know, picking up tips for technique and that kind of thing. But I'm coming in now with my ultramarine blue and I'm just refining my drawing a little bit. So 
I can't remember if I mentioned this earlier in the video or not, but um, it's certainly something I do quite a lot of. So I'll draw initially, then I'll paint, and then if necessary, I'll draw back into the painting, and then I'll paint again, and then I'll draw back in again if necessary. And I will go round and round that loop back and forth as many times as I feel is necessary. And sometimes in the finished painting, I'll deliberately leave regions which are very clearly drawn showing because, you know, um, sometimes those those areas can add to the overall image. 